Hey everyone and welcome to Comic Breakdown. If you are new to the channel, please hit that sub button, make sure you hit that notification bell so you're not missing any of the content that we have coming out. And today, we are going to be diving into Dark Knight's Death Metal, the multiverse who laughs. Now if you guys are not completely caught up on everything death metal related, I will leave a link in the description and at the top of this video. You guys can check out everything going on with this event, leading all the way up to today's current issue. Now our last issue really left us with Perpetua and the Batman Who Laughs getting into a, a fight, an altercation about who's going to be top dog. Now, while all of this is taking place, Robin King is talking to all of the, the little Robin goblins, and he's telling them stories, and, he, and he's really deciding on which story he wants to tell everybody, because there's so many of them. And now that the, the Dark Multiverse is having its opportunity to rise, we don't have to hear the stories that we've come to know for the last century or so. You know, we all know the story of Superman. We all know the story of Batman. We all know the story of Wonder Woman. But never do we get the stories that are never told. The dark stories that are hidden away in the dark corners of the dark multiverse. And so he sits here and contemplates which story to tell. He could tell the story of how Superman on his way to Earth, ran through a cosmic radiation storm, and upon arrival to Smallville, has a, a burning sensation for human flesh. Or he could tell the story of Barry Allen, and how he wanted to share his gift with everyone, and the Speed Force evolved. It evolved them into something predatory. And so we saw the human race blast off, societies build and collapse in seconds, and within hours, everyone is dead. He could tell the story of Martian Manhunter and how instead of deciding to work with Earth, he wants to bring his species back and so use Earthlings as hosts to repopulate his civilization and species. There's so many stories he could tell from, from Wonder Woman taking on the gods to Green Lantern being so scared of what happened during his, uh, his parallax event that he comes back and the Green Lanterns take over Earth. Lois Lane killing all the heroes and just becoming super OP. Like, there are so many possibilities. But the first story he tells us deals with Victor. Now, Batman fans will know who Victor is. Batman fans know him from Batman Shadow of the Bat, number one. And he's played a part throughout Batman's publications. He's pretty much a, a sadistic, psychopath, serial killer who carves a tally mark onto himself of, of every victim that he's taken and we see him tied up and he seems to be going somewhere in the back of, of a police vehicle or something of that nature and what we're learning here is that all the top dogs all the the top villains you know joker penguin all of them have been infused with the metal and it's made them something more something better and victor's thinking you know maybe maybe i'll be made the same Maybe they'll give me the same treatment. Maybe I'll become something more. And this is when he arrives at Arkham. And upon arriving, he's met by Amadeus. But he's going by a different name. And he, he's here to intake Victor into the facility. And he brings him to group therapy and we see Kite Man and a few other individuals. And Victor's really having issue, you know, fitting into this whole situation here. Because at the end of the day, he wants one thing. He wants the transformation. And the doctor's like, you know, yeah, 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 I understand. I understand what you want. I understand what you need. But we're going to continue doing the therapy. You're going to do the group sessions. You're going to do some art therapy. And this is when he takes Kite Man into the back and injects him with something. And Victor breaks in and it's just furious. Like he wants this transformation. He wants the metal. He wants to be something bigger. All the other big heroes got the living metal in them. And, and he feels like he's earned essentially the right to do it because of how many people he's killed. And this is where Amadeus just pulls out a pistol and shoots him. And he lets him know that he's pretty much a, a blood bag for Kite Man. For Kite Man to eat when he wakes up. 
and he tells them, you know, a, a, a murderer of 117 people mindlessly, artlessly, compulsively. This dark metal craves violence, yes, but it also craves a craft. We're more than, than just killers. They're death, darkness, and sorrow, but they also want to be music, poetry, they want to be whimsical. And that's something that Victor's not. And picking up the next day, we're wet with the arrival of two new individuals. The Cannibal Killer and the Condiment King. And so pretty much this story is telling us like in this earth, on, on this earth, Amadeus has been taking supervillains and essentially making them extreme supervillains to a point that they're almost godlike and they're running the streets of earth complete chaos everywhere and it's just one villain at a time getting injected with the living metal now picking up with our next story we're met with the super pets and our first panels give us crypto the super dog and we pick up with Crypto flying back to Earth. He had been away for some time now. And upon arriving to Earth, he sees that Earth has some kind of ring around it. And he gets closer and closer. He sees people just scattered, orbiting around Earth. So he goes to investigate. He gets closer in to find out what's going on. Maybe meteor or aliens. Maybe humans finally ended all of life. Arriving at the Hall of Justice, he calls out to anybody that'll, that'll hear him. And this is where he's met by the rest of the Super Pets. He's met by Streaky the Super Cat, Ace the Bat Hound, Bebop the Super Monkey, Comet the Super Horse. We have the Bat Cow. Like, this is pretty much making up the entire legion of Super Pets here. And Streaky goes on to tell him that if he had been here, there may be some kind of hope. Because everybody ended up turning on each other. And Ace goes into a little bit of detail, saying that it took just 24 hours for the virus to spread like wildfire and the planet was overtaken because everybody attacked each other, including the Super Pets. And it all started at the Hall of Justice. They were going over the day's events of everything that had happened. And Red Medvo breaks in. They all assumed that the Legion of Doom had sent him. And he has some kind of crazed look in his eyes. Something that something was wrong with him. And the super pets attack. Bebo was able to get a tranquilizer gun and put some tranks in him. And they're able to put him down. And under a, a microscope with further investigation, they find out that it, there's some kind of infection in his system. Nothing that they had ever seen before. And it's appearing that the Legion of Doom had weaponized him. And this virus spreads through contact. And he turns around to ask anybody if they had been bitten or scratched, licked, or drooled on. And the rest of the super pets have turned. The virus has taken them over and they are bloodthirsty. And so he isolates himself and attempts to make a, 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 a antiviral cure. But while he was doing this, the super pets went wild and took over everything. They infected everybody on Earth from corner to corner. Meanwhile, his supercomputer had worked overtime to break down the virus. It took 26 hours. And so he tracked down each of the super pets and gave them the antiviral. And Crypto asked why, you know, where's everybody at that? If you, you were able to create a cure, were you able to cure everybody? And this is where they tell him, like, everybody on Earth is dead. The people you see in this room, the animals you see in this room are the sole survivors. He only had enough time to produce the cure for them. Once the virus takes hold, death occurs in 19 hours. And so he did what he could to save the super pets, but everybody else he wasn't able to save. And this is when the super pets start to turn again. They start feeling bloodthirsty. And Crypto asks what is happening. And the super chimp pretty much tells him, like, I had no time to test the cure, so we... We weren't really understanding how long the cure would last, if it was permanent or indefinite. And this is when the super pets turn on them and attack. We get a little short story here of a future that is called New Oa, Subsector 070, formerly known as Star City. So we're assuming that this is the, the event where Green Lantern had turned into Parallax. Parallax was defeated, but he always had that fear inside of him of Parallax coming back. And so, they took over Earth to protect it. And we see two individuals running through the streets, scared, but then they're met by Green Arrow. An old man, white beard, white hair, 
And as he tries to get them out of there, Hal Jordan arrives. And he tells Oliver that he's a fugitive. And he's teaching these kids treason. And it's going to get them all killed. And Oliver tells him, like, this was our Earth. Like, no one asked you or the Guardians to come here and take it over. And Hal's under the assumption that th this is for the better. The Guardians have brought order and peace to Earth when it was not there. And this is where Oliver's just like, you know, that, that ring has been manipulating you. You and your mind to a point where you're no longer the, the, the hero I once remember fighting alongside. And he begs him to take the ring off. And Hal tells him he can't. He he needs it to protect Earth. And this is where Oliver says, all right, well, if this is how it's going to be, this is how it's going to be. And he pulls out a yellow cedar arrow. And him and Hal Jordan go head to head. Now, our next story and our final story picks us up in Metropolis. Now, Professor Crane's toxin had covered the Earth for over two years at this point. The entire Earth is covered in it. So everyone has to wear masks all the time. And we see this guy getting robbed. The mask is ripped off his face and he starts seeing horrible monsters attacking him. And this is where we see a sludge hammer drop down. And we see the arrival of Steel, aka Henry Johnson. And he beats the crap out of these these few thugs that are trying to to do harm to him and he comes and saves a guy and it looks like he drives a sword through him but then they wake up at the ironworks and he realizes he was actually just given an antitoxin and we learn here that he's able to be outside without any kind of mask on like the toxin doesn't affect him because crane's gas doesn't hit everyone the exact same way and there's this theory that goes out. It says that the... It's essentially saying that because of, of their ancestry of being forced into slavery and the brutality and the humiliation and the oppression that their race had endured for so many years, that Dr. Crane's toxin of fear didn't work on them because they weren't afraid. And so for him and other African Americans and things of that nature, minorities in general... Fear has already been a, a consistent part of life is what it's saying. And so having a, a gas that, that gives the impression of fear isn't going to have the same effect on, on somebody else who doesn't live in a, a constant state of fear or something of that nature. And the kid pretty much asks him, like, can you teach me? And he says, yeah, like, I, I can teach you how to feel fear that you'll lose everything that matters in a moment through no real fault of your own. I can teach you how to feel that and still move forward. You just have to believe that there's a day that, that, that comes when you won't need to. And when you know how to fight long enough to reach it. And he says, until then, the index is still at 8 and there's always work to be done. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You know, it, it was relatively long because we have so many short stories. But it's really nice to get this. And I'm really excited for Tales from the Dark Multiverse and seeing more of that. Because these are the stories, like, like the Robin King said, these are stories that we never get. So it's really awesome to see these unique stories, even if they're in uh, short story form in one shots. You know, I really do appreciate it. And who knows, you know, if they do really well, if they sell really well, we might actually get some extended onto it. You know, I really like to see a, a Green Arrow versus the Green Lantern in that context. I think it would be really freaking awesome. I, I personally have to say, I think that was my favorite story, even how short it was out of this whole thing so far. But yeah, let me know down in the comments, which one was your favorite story? Which one would you like to see carried on moving forward? And who do you think would win between Green Arrow and Green Lantern? Let me know down in the comments. If you have not yet, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and until the next video.